Sister Jane. Mr. Peter Davis, Senior Lecturer and Chair of the Department of Music, Theater, and Dance, will present to you Mr. Jonathan Michael Batiste. This way. <laughs> Come on up. Hey. <laughs> Here's what I got. <laughs> Jonathan Michael Batiste, Master of America's Music and Global Ambassador for Musical Connections. With charisma, unique style, and sturdy religious faith, you have made a joyful noise unto the Lord and all humankind through performance, study, mentoring, teaching, and innovative research. The child of a great musical family, born in Kenner, Louisiana in 1986, you were rocked in the cradle of jazz from infancy. You were drumming in your uncle's band by age eight and studying the piano by 11. You advanced quickly through the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts, releasing your first CD before graduation. At the Juilliard School of Music in New York City, you had earned a master's degree in piano by the time you were 23 released your second CD and formed a trio of Juilliard students playing around the city. That group grew into the extraordinary jazz quintet, Stay Human, which is now the celebrated house band of The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, playing to millions nightly. The desire to connect and uplift people through jazz has motivated you throughout your life. Your quest has led you to perform in over 40 countries teaching master classes, and offering international youth a chance to perform in the United States. You've encouraged young musicians with your social music residency and mentoring program. With your signature melodica in hand, you have performed and recorded in New York subways and on street corners. You have improvised the transformational experience of love riots as joyful citizens Followed the pied piping of the Stay Human Band, parading down city streets and sidewalks, in parks, and in the aisles of concert halls. In film and, tele and television, you have emerged as an authentic voice for the arts, a teacher and a witty comedian. As an associate artistic director of the National Jazz Museum in Harlem, you enthusiastically assumed much responsibility for the growth of the vital, fledgling institution that reaches and celebrates jazz, the only authentic homegrown art form in the United States. For sharing your great musical gifts and your profound understanding of the place of jazz in our country, for your desire to lift up all peoples, and for your delight in engaging musically in all of America, Salve Regina University is honored to bestow on, upon you the Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all its attendant rights and privileges on this 21st day of May, 2017. Today we're honored to confer the honorary degree upon Dr. Batiste, and we also have the privilege of welcoming him as our 2017 commencement speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Jonathan Michael Batiste. Good morning. How's everybody feeling today?
somebody feeling today. Well, I know I'm feeling good today. And to think that I'm a doctor. <laughs> I don't make house calls, though, that's for sure. <laughs> you know, thank you, Sister Jane, for that marvelous introduction. Your work and your spirit shines brightly, and you're an example for all of us in the generosity of spirit and character that you exude every day. May God continue to bless your work here at Salve Regina. I'd like to begin by thanking all the administration and the Board of Trustees for giving me an honorary doctorate of humane letters. Wow. From now on, I'll be sure to be as humane as possible. <laughs> I, I really do believe it's important to stay human. You know, it, it's, it's a great honor to be here today alongside my fellow honorary degree recipient, mentor, and music legend, Mr. George Ween. Really, what you've done for the community here in Newport is invaluable, and for the music community worldwide, there's so much that I've learned from watching you, and you know, when we get back to New York, I look very much forward to sitting down and having one of your cheese omelets again. <laughs> very delicious. And I'd like to thank all of the South Regina community, faculty, staff, parents, friends, everybody who came out to support, and last but not least, the graduating class of 2017. Yes. 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 What you have done today is significant. No matter what culture tells you, no matter what's on TV or the media, even if it's me, what you've done is significant. Put in, in time, put in, in blood, sweat, and tears, work ethic, frustration, success, frustration again. <laughs> All of these things build your character. And when you think about what's actually important in the world when you're going out to pursue your vocation, is who are you? Who do you want to be? And who can you help along the way? Asking yourself these questions will only help you to understand what you want to do, because that may change. What you're studying now, many of my colleagues, when we graduated, we took very different career paths to what we thought we were going to take at the time we were sitting in the seats that you're in. I'm 30 now, and not too long ago, it feels like just yesterday I was graduating. I remember walking around the halls of Juilliard, with my harmonica board in hand, eating my weight in pizza, <laughs> staying up until the wee hours of the night, dreaming about ways to change the world, thinking about what we could do to make a difference with music. And not looking back on that time, if I would have known all the things that we had at our disposal, I would have taken even more advantage of it than I did. And trust me, I worked it. But if you haven't done that, it's too late for you now. <laughs> but it's okay. The world has so much left to teach you. The world and the things ahead will be the greatest teacher that you've ever had. And from being around these lovely people, and understanding what you've been taught and the values that have been instilled in you in your four years here, I think that you are well prepared to step out there and take the stage. Thinking about when I first graduated and the way that the world was then, it's very different even to what it is today. I mean, we had Facebook. You have Instagram, Snapchat. All of this stuff that I, I, I don't really bother with. My sister Marissa is a digital native of y'all generation. She deals with that stuff. But when I'm thinking about it, I don't think it's going to slow down anytime soon. 
But what will help you to sustain and to be successful is to define who you are, define who you want to be, and who can you help along the way. By doing that, you establish your values. Basically, what I'm telling you is to get your priorities in order. Because once you have that in order, whatever's happening around you, it won't affect you very much. Because you'll have an internal fortitude amidst the chaos. You have to have that. Above anything else, what are your values? Because a lot of people will tell you what they think success is. But you have to define that for yourself. And once you define that for yourself, you can then begin your true vocation, your God-given purpose. I think back, I want to tell you a story that I've never told in public. I think back to a time when I first took the stage and the band, Stay Human, we were venturing outside of the jazz world. We were trying to figure out ways to reach people who didn't typically go to concert halls or jazz venues and think about jazz as something that they enjoyed. It wasn't in the social context for them. So we started to play in rock and roll venues, punk venues. We played in all of these different hip hop clubs and opened for different rap artists. And along that journey, we got booed once. One of the three times that the band has gotten booed in our entire existence. Now, I know that sounds like, oh, well, three times getting booed, you got to fail somewhere. But for us, we were used to playing into rooms where people would be elated to just see us before we even played a note. Because it's like, wow, you have young people who are interested in jazz? Great! <laughs> so we stepped on stage. As soon as we played the first note, I remember the audience was like, go home, boo! And I was like, wait a minute. Maybe we should change what we're doing. And then five minutes into trying to change it on the fly, no rehearsal, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna stick to the script. I started playing what we always play, through the boos. They started playing. The band got into it. They stuck to it. The crowd was booing. We got louder. They got louder. We got louder. <laughs> Back and forth. Until finally, my good friend Joe, who I met at uh, the age of 16, and we've still been playing together ever since. He's a drummer and tambourine player. He takes his tambourine. He's playing a solo. And the intensity must have gotten to him because he knocks the mic stand over with the tambourine. Bah! The mic hits the floor. There's feedback. The first time in 20 minutes throughout the set, there's silence. Everybody's looking at each other. And then, slowly, they all start to clap. And in that moment, in some small dive bar several years ago in Philadelphia, opening for whoever was the hot flavor of that month, I realized something very, very profound. Don't change who you are to fit the circumstances around you. At a certain point, you're gonna be in a place where nobody around you is like you or has your values. But when you reach that point, that's where you embolden them. That's when your values become stronger and that's when your character really comes to the test. And when you come out on the other side of that, you've really made progress in defining who you are and who you wanna be. The part about who you can help along the way, I truly believe that's something that comes from God. Finding time to meditate and pray apart from the, the, the world and all the things that can pull and tug at your time is very important. Because once you do the work, you have to have the purpose behind the work. 
The purpose behind the work has to come from a divine place. Money and accolades are great, but I tell you what, that's not what it's about. You can have all the money in the world and be completely unhappy. In some of the countries we've toured in, they have nothing. And those are some of the smilingest people you ever see. <laughs> so thinking about why you do this is something that I urge you to do. And I want to leave you with an exercise in how to do that. When you leave here, take a piece of paper. Write down at the top. This is who I am. And then just start listing things. Doesn't matter how disparate or varied they are. Just start listing things. And then figure out ways to combine the things that you have listed. My list would read something like red beans and rice, basketball, <laughs> piano. Duke Ellington. <laughs> but when you make those connections, that's your integrity. When you make those connections, that's who you are in its rawest sense. And you're not worried about the money and the accolades that will come. But force yourself to be creative. Embrace the uncomfortable. Embrace the uncomfortable and make sense out of it. And the second exercise I would urge you to do is right down at the top of another sheet of paper. These are my prayers. And think about who, what, and how you want to serve other people with that first list. This will guide you, and it will always change. It will always evolve. It will grow over the years. But ultimately, that's what it's all about. Hopefully, I'll see you along the road at some point, and we'll share some music and share some stories and share some omelets. <laughs> but until that time, may God bless you, and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you very much. <laughs>